Back to, you, you don't want to be in the shot? We, want, we prefer to have you in the shot, buddy. Okay, in the last video we talked about basically blocking the video, or blocking the kennel exit, so that the dog understands it has to stand there, but the door remains open. Now what we're going to do is we're going to keep on practicing just like we did in the last video until the dog is going in and LAYing within about 5 to 10 seconds right away. Once we get to that point, so we keep on repping it until we get to that point. It may take you a week. The more you practice, the faster you get at it. But don't do a whole bunch of practice in a row. Do a little in the morning, then go to school, do your thing, then come back and do it later. That's, that's it. There we go. Crash. Now, I'm not letting him out here because we want to have him for the camera work, but normally I would let him out immediately. And you saw how much faster he did it now, and I'm kneeling down, so I'm not as authoritative. That's another indicator that he feels comfortable. Now, what I'm gonna do is, next, once he gets to the point where he's laying down within five seconds, then I would add time before I let him out. And then I would basically wait another 10 seconds, then I would say, walk back over there, say C-O-M-E, let him come out, give him the treat. Then make sure you toss one or two treats in, let him go in and out. And then basically, and I would have Chase do it as well. So you guys are both blocking. Now you should be in here with him to back him up. And if he tries to sneak out behind you, you can kinda use this and block to prevent him from doing it, but we prefer to keep the door open. So what we're going to do is eventually get to the point where he, we're going to have him staying in there for up to 15 minutes laying down. Now if he lays down for 5 minutes, gets up, walks around, but doesn't try to come out and then just lays back down again, we keep the timer going. But if he tries to come out, then we reset the timer every time we have to rush forward and hiss. Um, what we want to do is help the dog practice being inside the kennel calmly. And again, we talked in the other video, there's two things that are going on. The kennel's keeping me sequestered and my humans are leaving me. Well, in this case, the kennel door is open and the human is here. So we're putting him in a position to succeed by eliminating a lot of the variables and letting him focus on one thing at a time. Don, I just worked with a nurse in my AM session and we talked about neural pathways in the brain. They realign when a dog sleeps. They also have something called myelin that covers them. And this is why the more we practice things, the faster and better at them we get. The more time that he spends in the kennel in this nice energy, he's nice and completely calm and relaxed and you're here. So this practice develops credit towards him being in the kennel in a calm way. Now we're gonna gradually keep on ramping that up until we can get up to the point, and different dogs is different levels. I will say though, in the studies that I've read, that once we get a dog to achieve two hours of something, they can go beyond it. Now a quick rule for the kennel, a dog should not be in a kennel for longer than five hours. It will develop more stress. So if we can't, if we're gonna be in an eight or nine hour shift, we're gonna to try to arrange for a dog walker to come home and let the dog out, feed lunch, and then uh, play a little bit and then put it back in there so it's not in, uh, longer than a five hour stretch. But basically we wanna gradually increase it. So one time it's one minute, the next time it's maybe two minutes. And if you go from one to two minutes and have a minute and a half, he starts whimpering and whining, then back up a half step and go to one and a half minutes. And keep practicing that one until he, can, he stays completely calm throughout that entire duration. Now what you might want to do, we're in the basement, we're in the process, or not we, but the family here is in the process of revamping this into a kind of a studio room. I might put a chair over there and move this stuff off the side so I can walk back and sit down in the chair. Maybe have an iPad or set up a, a small TV so I can watch a little TV and multitask while he's in here. So the idea is again to help him practice being in it for longer and longer periods of time. Now once we get to the point where we're up to like 15 to 20 minutes, and again you might have to go all the way to two hours. But we were, usually I, would, I tell my clients to go to about 15 minutes with the dog laying in, the, uh, in a calmly. Next stage is to repeat the entire process, but this time once he lays down, I close the door. I'm not latching it, I'm just closing the door so he gets the visual of seeing the kennel door closed. And the human's still here. And we're gonna do this one minute increments all the way up to 20 minutes as well. The next stage is to actually do the same process, but this time we're actually gonna close and latch the door if we can still latch this one. Um, and so now we've gradually gotten him to going in there so he's comfortable being in there, he's relaxed, he's practiced essentially being in here calmly. And so he's more inclined to channel that same behavior later on. Now there are, are some other things that we can do to create a little bit more, more of a desire to go into the kennel. I'm gonna show you a couple of them here. So one of the things we can do is toss a treat in the kennel and close the door. Or put another high value item in the kennel, but he doesn't have access to it. Now we're creating a desire to get in here because that's the only place that has the treat. 
Um, I like using marrow bones. If you go to the green spot in Omaha, a lot of high-end pet stores will have these. They're a round bone and there's marrow in the middle of it that are usually frozen because they will stink really bad, so keep them in your freezer. But some people will drill a hole and they take a zip tie and zip it. Make sure you do it low to the very back of the kennel. So the dog gets to go in the kennel and he can only chew on the high value item while he is inside the kennel. We do this with the door open. So again, he has more practice being in the kennel where something positive happens to him. Something else that I do is every once in a while, just like we did for the dog bed upstairs, we did that off camera, we're gonna leave a treat in here when he's not in this room, when he's not in the kennel. So he comes down here, oh, there's a treat. And he goes in there, if we can, we would wanna be here and say the word beach or casa or whatever the word is. Um, but if every time he goes in the kennel, he finds a treat waiting for him, he's gonna be more inclined to check it out. And some dogs will come start hanging out in the kennel on their own with the door open. If Chase has some buddies over, it's too much for him to deal with. He goes in the kennel, he gets to relax. Now my, my, my rule would be if the dog goes in the kennel voluntarily, unless there's a reason where the adult changes, like if he goes in there to get away from us, we, th this is his room and his sanctuary. So if we have kids over and it's too much for him to deal with, he recuses himself, puts him in there. The kids cannot entice him to come out. But you see that he's able to go in and out. He feels very comfortable. It's gonna take a little bit of practice, but this is, I've had 100% success rate for this. Every time we've done this, the dog just gets to the point where they enjoy going in the kennel and they are no longer panic state. And then you can have your dog in a safe place where you know, casa, that they're not gonna destroy anything. So this is how we can add a little positive reinforcement structure to helping the dog. We Actually, before I end this, one last thing. When you come to let him out, if he's a little mini tornado, we open the door and let him out, that's the energy we're gonna have. So what I would do is when it comes time to letting him out, come over here, open it, wait for him to settle, and open it up, and then you're gonna kind of repeat the same thing that you were doing earlier. So he understands when I come home, when the, just because the door's open doesn't mean I have permission to come out, I need a release command. My dog Callie, when I was still using a kennel, I could actually come home, open this door, go across the house to a completely different room, take change clothes, go in the bathroom, wash my hands, go in the kitchen, start preparing dinner, and then just say, uh, I would say release is her word, and she would run out. But she had to stay in there with the door open, and again, that's another opportunity for the dog to practice, to develop, and practice more self-control. So this is how we can use a little bit of structure and positive reinforcement to help the dog learn that the dog kennel is a positive place.